So welcome back everybody, this is Paul again in another of my videos. <laughs> I get a lot of interesting feedback from some people who view my videos and it's kind of funny sometimes to listen to comments. But I also get a lot of really good feedback and I really appreciate that. And one of the things I talk about often is the subject of consciousness because it's so, so important. It really is basically the fundamental thing because <clears throat> Let's say we're scientific mind and we're curious and so on, we have a lot of questions. But the first question that we need to ask is the old question, well, who are we? Who's asking the questions? <laughs> and when you say it like that to some people, sometimes it's kind of like catches them off guard because nobody ever really came up to them and said, hey, by the way, have you ever thought about who you are? Uh, you ever stop and think about that a little bit, you know? But that hasn't been true in all cultures, and in, in many cultures, there are meditative type cultures from the East and others. That question is a really, really old question, and there are some answers. And the thing is that the answer to that question really is a process. And I'll give you an example. Let's say, for example, there's a kind of game that you know people play, and you have to roll a certain number to get on the board. Well, the question the thing that we have to roll to get moving in this life is we have to ask that question, who are you? Who are we? Now we can start. Now the whole thing starts, okay? We can start exploring and figuring that out. Now, what we have in this life represents a needle. A needle with a thread. That needle, that point of the needle represents our attention. That's what we have. We can take our attention whatever that little pinprick or whatever it is that we're aware of, our little focus, and we can put it on anything, whatever. So what are we going to weave with our thread of attention? What are, we can put any kind of thread on there. We can make any kind of garment. We can do what we want with that thread. But what are we going to do with it? Now, again, back to that question, we should ask that question. Who's looking out of these eyes? Now, I started thinking of this kind of analogy, and let's say you're in a dream, and all of a sudden you wake up in this dream, and you're looking out like a, a window. It looks like a little window, and you're just kind of peeking out, and you're looking out, there's all kinds of stuff going on out there. And then, you know, you hear a little voice, and it says, just back up a little bit. So now you, you take a few steps back, and then during this dream, you start waking up, and you realize, my God. It's not just a little peephole, it's a window. No, it's a door. It's like a whole expanse. And then you realize, well, I'm in the whole palace. And there's just like this, ad, you know, I'm not just looking out this peephole, these little eyes. And then you realize, my goodness, it's like, you know, there's a galaxy. Now I'm in the floating in the center of the galaxy. Because the point of infinity goes inward just as far as it goes outward. And because inward is where we have immediate reference point, maybe someday science is going to go find all the answers, the, the, maybe the infinite knowledge, all the formulas for every kind of technology and every kind of thing and every kind of life form, they're going to know it all, theoretically. But is that possible? outwardly. So another analogy is like let's say you come to this you're walking through uh, your journey and you come to a little a little stream and it's a little bit too big to jump across but you now you got a puzzle there what am I going to do about this stream? Well you can go around the entire earth back where you came from go all the way around see if you hopefully you don't cross any more streams and come back and maybe then you'll be on the other side. Or you can just take a log and you connect a bridge. Just walk over and you're over there in a couple seconds. And the relevance of what I'm just, that example is that 
You know, all the great teachers that have ever come on this planet, and I've read a lot of them and so on, and it's just like it's really a no-brainer. It's kind of like be simple, um, go within, um, start asking that question early in life and trying to get some answers. And time is short. I mean, life can be short. So again, you know, fast, fast, fast. Let's wake up here. Let's do it. What are you going to wait for? You know, the, the purpose of your life, you want to cross and have some clarity. Why delay? <clears throat> so that brings up like, okay, you know, what kind of techniques can help us cross this river? You know, to help this understanding, you know, do, you, do we need to learn about the auras? Do we, all the different things that we can learn and figure out what this, who we are or whatever. Study chemistry, study biology, learn about bones. I mean, you know, you could do that too. But ultimately, the great teachers say, look, it's simple and it's time sensitive. So there are techniques, there's all kinds of techniques, but the question is, do you want to put your foot in front of the other and actually use a technique and step across that little footbridge and boom, you're right there. And that's the question, do we want to do it? Because the techniques are there. Again, it's not a matter of time, it's a matter of waking up. In other words, let's say for example, you know, again, these dreams, okay, you're in a dream and you're in a room and you're stumbling around everything and everything is like, oh my God, you're, you're just like, oh my God, I'm freaked out. I might hurt myself. And then all of a sudden the light goes on and all of a sudden, my God, the whole room is like full with jewelry and fine things and every possible thing that's fine and beautiful that you can imagine. So it's a matter of the clarity is, can be just like, oh, and one of the simplest things is to start asking that question, we are not this body. There's more to our perception and our being. Like I said, there's an inner dimension of awareness that goes to infinity just like there is in the external world. And it can be practical experience. Again, we don't have much time, so okay, well, let's get with it here. Find a few techniques, practice them, because, again, you know, the, the reality is extremely simple. It's actually, you know, like a baby's born and they have an awareness. They're not, their awareness at a certain stage, they may not be in relation to something. All they're doing is they're conscious and they're experiencing the sweetness of their own life and maybe very they might be hearing things and they're gurgling and you know they're just like really these balls of living consciousness and they don't have like a assembled identity yet and so it's really rather simple it's a matter of just like okay taking in other words there's a saying about scriptures the scriptures are like shoes. If you wear the shoes to the temple and then you put them aside and you go inside the temple to have the sacred experience without the shoes. You don't need the shoes to have the experience. You don't need the scripture. The scriptures are like, okay, here's some interesting testimony, you know, but what about an experience? What, if, what about a simple experience? Because Religion tends to make things really, really complicated. And we know, I mean, even all the teachers of the great religions said, look, it's simple. It's simple, 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 simple. And then, you know, a, a long time later, it's complex, it's complex, it's complex. Question is, do we want, like, the thirst can be quenched. It's a matter of picking up the water and, and drinking it. That's very simple. It can, you know, you can take a rock that's been out of the water for thousands of years and then you can just like plunk it in the water and boom it's instantly completely soaking wet so our own awareness as i've made in a lot of these videos is that thread that thread that what are we going to weave with our attention in our life what are we going to build what kind of a stitch are we going to make here do we want to complete inward outward recognize okay there's an infinity there's an infinity outside there's an infinity inside like that infinity symbol 
right in the middle is the nexus there okay imagine that in three dimensions okay so that you have like basically all kinds of infinities of possibilities but what you have to do is get to the central point from that point you know you might call there's a thing called a rain cloud of noble things the beautiful phrases that i read one time and every human being it's like we're let's say that the universe is vast so the inner universe is vast the field of consciousness is vast the, the physical universe is vast as above so below now each of us is shining our own light within a certain area and a certain spectrum of this vastness of inner space and so every human being has a certain particular radiant or interest there's not a contest of levels or are you high or are you low level are you one of this you know this whatever it's not <laughs> you know it's just beauty everywhere it's just ecstasy everywhere it's everything is equally beautiful because it exists now Again, I, these videos have to be short because of the YouTube limit and so on, but meditation and letting go is very, very simple. It's, and now, <clears throat> when you start getting the egos, people say, well, I can't listen to you because you are like this or you are, you know. If it's teaching that you can benefit from and use in your life, it doesn't matter where it comes from. And I'll give you a little final example, a little analogy. Let's say you're a traveler and you come to this little town and you want to ask somebody, okay, well, what's around the next hill here? I'd like to know, you know, and he finds some scraggly little guy and he asks him, hey, what's on the other side of this hill? And he looks up and he says, well, on the other side of this hill there's a bunch of wolves, a whole pack of wolves howling. So the guy says, well, I better get a second opinion. He goes in the pub and he sits around a lot of educated people there, a professor and a naturalist and all the gentry are sitting there having a beer and he says well, okay you know there's a guy out there he says there's a pack of wolves on the other side of this hill and they all started having a laugh and joking around and saying no don't worry fellow ha ha you know we've been around this town for a long time and don't worry about it so the guy goes off on his way and sure enough there's a pack of wolves on the other side of the hill so who you listen to where we get information, whether it's appropriate for us, whether we can make use of it, immediate use of it, because it's time sensitive, okay, if it's offering clarity and possibly even protection from danger, it's like, okay, let's get with it here. I mean, you wake up in life, okay, how can life be boring? Every single possible, every single day, there's incredible things going on that we can participate in. And one of those things is to expand our awareness and to meet other human beings and uh, just reach out to the whole cosmos externally and internally. So again, I keep talking about this thing called attention and about focus and about perception because that is it. That's it. Those are our headlights. If we don't have a clear concept of where we're going here or what's out there at least, you know, once we know what What's there, we can navigate, but if we don't even, can't even see, we need some clarity. So again, you know, I encourage people who watch these videos, I mean, if I inspire one person in my whole life, fine, that's incredible. Uh, but a lot more, actually, I know have been listening and enjoying it. So I put my two cents out there, share my, my little experiences in life, and uh, I welcome everybody to come back and, and hear some more, and I watch other content. Again, thanks for watching.